Welcome back to Huchos. So today we'll be undertaking an experiment that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Um, playing with plant nutrients is pretty fun. And um, it's always made me wonder what actual plant nutrients that are made by a plant for the growth of its offspring look like in hydroponics so enter coconut water uh, coconut water is the water from green coconuts that uh, is meant for the offspring of the coconut palm to give nutrients and a balanced solution of uh, all the necessary requirements for the plant to take root in an unknown location um, where it may not necessarily have access to fresh water and all of the nutrients that it needs to start off in life. Essentially, a coconut is a life raft containing everything necessary to begin life for a new coconut palm. So in order to achieve something like this, we'll cut a hole in the lids on our jars. Now I've calculated that each of my jars holds 800 mils of solution. So for each jar, I will make up 800 mils of each solution that I plan on testing. So as the controls in this experiment, I'm going to make up a nutrient solution that would usually be used in a crack key system. And I will do an unaltered coconut water solution uh, where the plant will be grown in only coconut water, unbalanced pH and uh, undiluted solution. I just realized that it'd probably be easier if I um, covered these in alfoil first. So now they're all alfoiled up and labeled. I'm gonna go and fill them with solution. But so first we're gonna grab some seedlings uh, that I've been growing in my propagation system. Um, I'll grab six tomato seedlings that are almost identical sizes. And that should give us a good baseline um, to set the control for the experiment. So it looks like um, the humidity dome is providing a really good environment for the seedlings at the moment. Uh, this is happening and um, it's 31 and a half degrees right now. Uh, <laughs> so it's probably not the best time to transplant seedlings. Uh, I might leave this for tonight, so uh, apologies if the video quality changes due to the lighting. Alrighty, so it's actually a bit over a day later now. Um, our control has actually survived, but um, since he's a day ahead, I'm going to start a second control um, just to keep it all even playing field. Um, and it's the temperature's dropped too, so that's nice. Alrighty, there we go. Now uh, let's wait and see what happens. And this is where they're gonna live. So uh, this gets uh, partial shade in the morning and the afternoon, and is protected from the worst of the midday sun by a shade cloth. So it shouldn't be too harsh for the seedlings starting off, and we can move them to a um, more inhospitable situation. <laughs> if they grow a bit bigger. So um, let's see how they go. I've just added in some cups to act as um, makeshift humidity domes to let the tomato seedlings uh, climatize to their new environment. Alrighty, so it's been out 24 hours and um, let's see how they look. 
So the first coconut water control uh, that I planted, which was about ooh, 48 hours, a little bit more than 48 hours ago, is looking a little bit sad. This one is the Grow Nutrient Solution, which is looking really healthy. The coconut water control number two, which I planted yesterday with the rest of them, is looking a little bit droopy, but this one is the cocoa with 2.4 pH 6.5. This one is the cocoa EC 2.4. This one is the Coco PH 6.5 EC 1.8. And this one is the Coco EC 1.8. They're all doing pretty good. Um, except for our coconut control, which was the 48 hour ago. The first coconut control. Alrighty, quick day three update. It seems that the original coconut water control has whoop, given up the ghost. Um, and the coconut water control 2 has um, not done as well as some of the other plants either. So it's day four, um, and we're working under light because uh, I had a big day. Um, we've lost two of the plants. Well, definitely lost one, um, and the second one of the cocoa at EC 2.4 is giving up the ghost as I speak. Um, the grow solution seems to be doing fine, um, and the cocoa pH balance, both of the pH balance are doing reasonably good as well, um, and the cocoa EC 1.8 is doing alright, um, which makes me theorise that um, the pH balancing actually has a lot to do with their success, um, but we'll see how they go in days to come. Uh, surprisingly, out of all of them, the uh, pH balanced EC 2.4 is doing pretty pretty much the best, uh, even though the EC 1.8 would be very close. Um, the grow solution is actually doing a little bit worse than I would have expected. Um, so I'm actually going to leave the humidity domes off for the night. Uh, just to give them a little bit of acclimatization to uh, the conditions and I'll check on them in the morning and um, if they're looking worse for wear I will throw them back on but um, if they seem to be doing fine we'll see how they go in the uh, Queensland summer. Alrighty. So it's day five and uh, they're all wilted, except for the grow solution. So um, I came out this morning to discover that they had all wilted overnight and the only one that sprung back is the grow solution. So I'll keep the grow solution going for a little bit and we'll see how it does. So we've skipped ahead due to the holidays. And uh, it's now day eight. Um, there's one clear winner here, and it's the grow solution. However, I don't put the death of most of the seedlings down to the coconut water. Um, although it may have contributed, um, I actually think that it was the environment that did most of the damage here. So... As you can see on the seedling in the grow solution, even it suffered some damage, um, probably due to um, over transpiration um, during its early stages. 
when I remove the humidity domes. So the coconut water control from the first batch um, has completely died. Uh, the coconut water control number two uh, is still green, but um, I'm going to call it a goner. Uh, the coconut water uh, pH balanced EC 2.4 still has some rigidity, um, but it is um, suffering from uh, some buildup of uh, what I can only assume to be nutrients that it doesn't like in its um, upper leaves um, traveling up and down the stem. Uh, the same is true for the coconut water of 2.4 EC, uh, non-pH balanced. The pH balance and non-pH balance um, pretty much looking very similar, um, perhaps a little bit better on the uh, non-pH balance side. However, um, I can't rightfully chalk that up to um, the pH balancing. So uh, I may have to revisit this experiment in a controlled environment um, under some LED lighting where I can control the temperature and humidity uh, to give me um, or give the plants a better start in life. Alrighty, so um, not a complete failure, but uh, I will have to revisit this experiment in the future. So in the conclusion to this experiment, um, I will leave the question open. However, I do believe that coconut water does not give um, the optimal growing condition for um, seedlings. Uh, whether or not you can make it work with a controlled environment, I will analyze in a future experiment. However, in the environment that these seedlings grew in, uh, being harsher than usual, um, I would not recommend coconut water as a nutrient to grow your seedlings in. So thanks for joining me here on Hoochos. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time on Hoochos.